I wanted to talk to you guys today because recently we made some discoveries on the gravity flyer. Now, a lot of you out there have been with us on this journey and are seeing everything in raw format and not all polished up and done. Alexi already showed you things going to fly. Now, all we have to do is interpret why. So, step by step, piece by piece, we've been breaking this thing down. However, now we're at an impasse we actually are seeing on equipment what's actually going on here. We're having frequency from our Tesla coil that comes in in the kilohertz range. We have frequency from our high voltage source that's coming in in the kilohertz range. We have a ultrasound that's coming in the megahertz range, but then as you pulse it dips down right through the kilohertz range. It's significant in understanding this. There are various tests that we've done for everything. You guys have recently seen me take my Tesla coil and add different frequencies to it, whether it be the vibration of the plate, whether it be the frequency of the Tesla coil itself. This is the understanding we're getting to on this. Also on the other side, you see high voltage. Now, I built a circuit that will change the frequency of the high voltage. What I tried to show you guys is the high voltage and doing it with just different power sources. What's the actual answer there? Well, with the more amps, you get a very low frequency. With the thinned out amps and the higher volts, you're getting a higher frequency. Every time that you see that voltage go to a very purple state, it becomes high frequency. That's why when you run your AC flyback, and you go to put your capacitors in there, they have to be in the high frequency range or otherwise they don't work. You also need to use high frequency diodes or else it doesn't work. A lot of the stuff I do on my channel has to do with flyback coils. So if I change the frequency on the flyback coil and I turn it up to the kilohertz range, what it does is it makes that spark go real, real thin and spreads out. It's a beautiful display but it's also putting it right in the kilohertz range. When it has too much white in it, it goes down in frequency, down into the hertz range. That's not where we want it. That's what interferes with your TV. We're not looking for that. We want to be in the kilohertz range. So knowing that all of these have to be in the kilohertz range is important. So we saw the test. We saw Jared do it. Simple frequency going in He's taking his Tesla coils, he's bringing it up to the kilovolt range, then he brings the ultrasound in, right there at the megahertz range, and then right through the actual kilohertz, he's bringing the, the dip or the pause. Basically, he's hitting the on and off button. So every time it's on, it's in the megahertz range, every time it's off, it drops right through the kilohertz. Because remember, the circuits don't go dead right away there's capacitors in there. So for a brief second, they're still charged. So it's still gonna have a frequency that goes through it. This is hopefully where you guys are going with this. We know that this machine absolutely does not work on super high voltages. We know that it's working on frequency. The voltage is simply a tool to get us to the frequency, to get the frequency into the craft. Now. The combination of these things. What's going to have to happen? Well, we're getting on the edge of it. So it's going to be between an EMP or lift. And it depends really where you dive in each frequency together. Too many peaks hitting at the same time, you get a big EMP. Not what we want. We want it right before that. So if you ever hear me see, or you ever hear me say that it chops like this. It's because I know that we cannot be 100% on the spikes because that's an EMP. We have to be just before them. So if my hands represent the spikes, you're going to have one here, here, and one coming down just like this. That's where you need to be with this. Just off of an EMP, not quite an EMP. Just right where we need to be. This is a frequency machine. Everything that's put into it has to do with frequency. 
you saw me test the center plate. The magnets get on there and create an endocurrent, but it's also creating frequency in the kilohertz range. That was an important test to understand that. We now know our Tesla coil has always been in the kilohertz. That was an easy giveaway. If you understand the high frequency, or excuse me, the high voltage on the high voltage circuit, and you understand how to manipulate that frequency, and where the thinness and the thickness of the actual spark is, then you already knew it was in the kilohertz range. Now, with the discovery that we're putting it together with what the ultrasound machine now does, we are now understanding the spike. This is a step before we get to lift. We got a lot of tuning to do. This means buying more equipment. This means seeing everything work together. One thing I'll also tell you on the high voltage that you may not understand. You're dealing with a frequency that will shut off when it gets too high. So, when you put in the high voltage on the top disc, the reason it's losing charge is simple. The frequency of the ultrasound is too high. So, it's diminishing the frequency of your high voltage coil. Therefore, all of the positive charge goes to the bottom and it stays there until the actual ultrasound turns off. Then it starts to creep back up. Remember, both of them have to be there in balance to make it stay steady. Getting rid of the top one here gives you lift because all of it's sound in the bottom. It's important to understand this, guys. This whole thing is going to be a frequency machine. Everything of voltage that goes into it is because we're trying to get frequency into it. So, the next couple steps from here, what are they? Well, you're going to have to start to see different machines coming in. We're going to have to start to use our oscilloscope. We're going to have to put on the frequency. We're going to have to see where the spikes are. We're going to have to be able to line up everything. Now, Alexi does this by ear. He can understand the different frequencies going on. He does it by ear. That is a very special trait. That has not come along to everybody in this world. However, he's been doing it for 10 years before he released the video. Probably more. So for us just coming in, we're on this, what? Maybe in the last year it's really picked up. Maybe in the last few months it's picked up a lot. But this is really where we are, guys. We're actually reverse engineering something to get it to where it needs to be. That's why it's so important to do every single little test that you can because you never know which result you need to pick out of that test. It's just like when he talks about his inventors that he listens to. He doesn't care what every single inventor does on every single thing in the broad spectrum of their inventions. He cares about one for one specific purpose. And you know what? Debunking each inventor is really a worthless goal because he's not looking for the results of one, you know, giant test. He's looking for one specific area in that test. It's just like playing with your high voltage. I look for one specific thing for one specific reason. So hopefully you guys are starting to understand this. We are dealing with a frequency machine. Therefore, you must now get your mind in the harmonics level we are going to start to hit these things don't forget how many there are here you have two plates that have high voltage on them you also have a center plate you also have your ultrasound on top your tesla coil goes into your center plate now when you spike it what should you get you should get a feedback into your tesla coil I tried to show this in the frequency. I call it like an alien sound. Some people call it a fishing reel. When you get that to push back into your Tesla coil, you know that you're hitting it. You know that you're getting to that point because now you know that your frequencies are aligning. It's like taking a mic and putting it into a speaker and you get that nasty sound. Well, that's what you're looking for from your Tesla coil. That same sound, that's what you want. And then, things start to happen. They start to fall together. We start to see the pieces come into play. Now, there's different ways of doing things, so more tests still have to be done. But we are getting there, guys. This is really close to getting there. You may wonder why I do this and come out with videos and different theories and things like that. 
I'm trying to set a record here. I want to be able to establish where I started to where I end. And that way everybody has the full record of why things are happening. A lot of people complain, hey, Tesla's papers weren't released. We don't know what he did. We don't know what he went through. We don't see all the different experiments that he did to get to his goal. My goal was to show all of it. I show it in raw form so you can do your own decision on anything you want. But I also show you exactly how I look at it and how I break it down. And then I show other inventors on how they're breaking it down. It's important to have every bit of perspective that you can, because as you go through this, things change little by little. And then how you look at them changes with each single experiment that you do. And then you get a unified theory. Once you have your theory, then you start working that theory. Then you fine tune it down to a very specific area. And that's where we are now. Anyway, I hope this helps you guys out in all your adventures in building the gravity flyer. I know what's helping me. I know that everybody around me and the team here that we work on things really know what they're doing. So just understand and trust us when we say this. We're getting close. We're not there yet, but we are getting close. We know exactly where to look. So hopefully this helps you guys out. Also, I just... There was one other thing that had to do with the uh, high voltage coil and the weather, and I don't think a lot of people understand this. It has to do with the moisture in the air. So let me explain this because I get a lot of questions on this. When you get to the point in the morning, right at nighttime, right before morning, you get that dew state where there's moisture in the air. That's probably right before you get to that is where you need to be and to have the best success possible when you're running a high voltage coil. Not when it's dry, but right when you have just a little bit of moisture in there, because then what's going on? Electricity that's static flows through water. You don't want it flowing into water all the way because then it'll stay in the water. You want like a mist state so that it actually bounces from one molecule to the next and spreads out like a spider web. You do not want one volt going like this. That's bad. If you ever look at lightning, it's not exactly one volt going through the cloud. It's a spider web effect. And then when it hits one massive thing of water, it boom, it shoots down. It gives us a massive volt. People don't understand that we're living between a positive and a negative voltage. And they're always trying to connect in every way that they can. So what do they do? They put these big things on towers for the antenna so that it can connect earlier. So what happens there? It's no different than setting up your high voltage experiment. You're getting the voltage to pass through right before it starts to make a color, an aurora look. Right before it gets to that is where we are in this world. So just understand that. Understanding that understands this. So when you want to put moisture in one of these, what do you want to do if you want a controlled experiment? What would you want to put in there? You'd want to take a water bottle. You just want to put sand in there and just get it damp. Not overly watery, damp. Just enough to color the sand. That's it, that's the perfect area you want to be. Take your wire, cover it with tubes. That allows all that moisture to get in there. Because of your wire is too thin, it'll create a bleeding effect. Match the bleeding effect with the water effect. You're going to get a higher conductivity in it and you're going to get the right result. Understanding that understands temperatures outside of when you should run this thing and what to do when you need to dry it out and what you need to add to it. Because when you have it too wet, the voltage doesn't work right. It overvolts. When you have it too dry, it undervolts. So you have to know exactly where to tune it at. It's a simple tuning once you understand it, but if you don't, it's going to play havoc on your world. Anyway, like I said, I hope you guys enjoy this. I hope you guys understand it. And if you like what you saw today, please like, share, subscribe, do all those fun things, and have yourself a great day.